Binger and Bayo were best of friends. Since they were toddlers, they really loved each other and always shared everything together. To the extent of having the same profession, they were both haunters together. They haunted for animals for years, and it became clear to the villagers that wherever you find Binger, you will surely find Bayo and vice versa. The two friends went to supply bush meat to a very wealthy man known as Chief Alaf one day, and they were received warmly by the chief's daughter Ab. Ab served them food and palm wine and started chatting with Bayo. You look so handsome, Ab said to Bayo. You are extremely beautiful, my lady, Bayo replied. They both started giggling and staring at each other with so much love and interest. After that day, the relationship flourished and a few months later, Bayo got married too. Bayo also became very rich and lacked nothing. A year after his marriage, his wife, Ab, gave birth to two bouncing baby boys. It was from one good news to another for Bayo. About a year later, Binga, who was his childhood friend, also fell in love with Bisola, the orange seller. They got married not too long after but had no children. Bayo, on the other hand, welcomed another set of twins again with his wife. Binger and his wife, Bisola, prayed and prayed, but they remained childless. One day, Bayo, who felt pity for his friend's situation, decided to take Binger and his wife to a popular fertility herbalist who was famous for helping families have children in their village. On getting there, the money required for local testing and herbs was too expensive for Binger to afford, but his kind friend, Bayo, paid for it all. Binger and his wife got tested and given some herbal drinks to take home. They were asked to return in two days for the results of the test. Binger and his wife went to the herbalist after two days and were both told that Binger is the source of their childlessness. He has what is known as low sperm counts. In the modern world, this condition means he won't be able to impregnate a woman easily. Why me? Binger cried. His wife, Bisola, pacified him, and they left the herbalist. A week later, Binger's mother came to visit them. Bisola was so glad to see her mother-in-law, and as she rushed to meet her and help her with her luggage, a loud slap landed across her cheek. You go! Binger's mother shouted. Bisola fell on the ground, weeping and devastated. Mama, I am not God. I also want children, Bisola said while crying. You are just useless. I am sure your womb can only carry stones. Very soon I will bring a new wife for my son, she continued to insult and berate Bisola. Throughout all this, Bisola could have easily revealed that her husband is the cause of their childlessness. But she endured all the insults and blame from her mother-in-law. She didn't want to expose her husband. Binga returned in the evening and his mother continued the insults on Bisola while telling her son she has found him a very beautiful and fertile wife who will bear him many children instead of the empty barrel he calls a wife. Mama, that is enough. I won't let you disrespect my wife in my presence. As soon as the sun rises tomorrow, please return to your husband's house. Binga angrily said to his mother. She has charmed my son, his mother began shouting. It was hell for Bisola. Anywhere she turned to, even the villagers mocked her for not having a child five years into their marriage. Still, they had none. One day, Bisola was returning from the market carrying so much load. A young boy came to help her with some of the things she was carrying. The boy's mother saw him and rushed out to pull the boy away from helping Bisola. If you need a child to assist you, why don't you give birth to one? The woman said. Tears began to drop from Bisola's eyes. One midnight, Binger woke his wife. He wanted to discuss something with her. What is it, my husband? Bisola asked him. I need you to do something for me, Binger replied. What do you need? You know I will do anything for you, Bisola confidently said. And in tears, he continued. I want you to have an affair with another man so you can get pregnant. May the gods forbid. Why would you think of such, she angrily said. Binger proceeded to persuade her. He said it would be a secret between them and no one would know about it. Bisola was so disgusted, she said she wouldn't involve herself in anything relating to fornication. She also added that when it was time, the gods would give them children. Binger argued that time wasn't on their side anymore. And according to the herbalist, his low sperm counts would make having children very difficult. Oh. He also added that he was tired of hearing everyone blaming Bisola for something that isn't her fault. 
Doing this would take away all our shame, Binger cried. Bisola angrily left him in the room that night. Ever since then, Binger stopped eating at home. He stopped talking to his wife for over two weeks and when Bisola got tired of his cold shoulder, she decided to do what he wanted. Okay, if it will make you happy, I will do as you wish, Bisola told him one morning. He was overjoyed and hugged her tight while saying, Thank you, thank you, my wife. Bisola asked a question. What if the man I do this with comes back to ask for his child? Binga didn't know what to say. After some time, he finally replied, I think we need to look for a man that we trust, someone with upright character. For days, they thought about who they could trust to help them out. But Binga later informed Bisola, he thinks his friend, Bayo, would be perfect for this. Your friend, Bayo, Bisola said, disgusted by the thought of it alone. Binga claimed Bayo is like his brother and he's sure he would be perfect for this. He also added, after all, Bayo's wife gave birth to twins three times in six years. Bisola agreed and Binger promised to speak to Bayo later that week. Three days later, Binger told this to a confused-looking Bayo. Bayo instantly rejected, but Binger didn't want to take no for an answer. He also threatened to commit suicide if Bayo didn't help him impregnate his wife. Please sleep with my wife, it is only you I trust, Binger said in tears. After days of back and forth, Bayo finally agreed to help his friend, excused them while his friend Bayo and his wife Bisola did what had to be done. Two weeks later, Bisola was confirmed pregnant. Binga was very happy about this news, and when Abel began to grow, it became the talk of the village. After nine months, she gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. The baby was later named Ollie, but things took a sad turn after Ollie clocked two years. Binga began to beat the two-year-old boy at any given and ungiven opportunity, down to beating the boy for not eating fast enough. Bisola always tried to plead with Binga by reminding him, Ami is still too young to be treated that way. But Binga would always say, Are you trying to say he is not my son or I don't know what is good for my son anymore? Bisola was always quick to retreat whenever Binga gaslighted her this way. As the child grew, Binga's hatred for the boy also grew. The year Ollie clocked seven, Binga beat him for playing ball without wearing slippers. He even stepped up wickedly by putting pepper in the young boy's nose. Bisola did nothing about this. She was totally helpless. Ollie's body was filled with various skin marks from his father as his mother applied ointments to his wounds. One day, Ollie used the opportunity to ask her if Binga was truly his father. Bisola was terrified by this question, but she evaded it quickly and said, why would you think of such a thing? He's your father. He corrects you because he loves you. Oli looked confused as to why his own father treated him this way. Days turned to weeks and weeks to months. Now 19 years of age, Oli wanted to start an Ankara fabric business. He begged his father for some money, but he refused to give it to him. His mother promised to try her best to get him the money in three months, so he just had to be patient. The following week, Binga's best friend, Bayo, came to visit them with his wife. Bisola prepared food for them and Binga asked Oli to go get some drinks for their visitors. He returned with the drinks, placed them on the table and left to bring some cups. As he got to the sitting room, one of the cups dropped and broke on the floor. See this imbecile of a boy. Binga shouted in front of the visitors. He immediately gave Omi a slap, kicked him and banged his head on the wall. Bisa started crying. Even A.B., B.'s wife, screamed, B, please stop. But he refused and continued to kick. I froze. I didn't know how to interfere. I begged him to stop his friend. And as he tried to pull B.G.A. from, B.G.A. shouted, He's my son, isn't he? You have no right to tell me when to stop beating my own son. B. and his wife, A.B., left angrily that evening. When they got home, A. asked B. why he wouldn't talk some sense into his best friend. BGA and stop him from abusing his son. Every time B cautioned his wife not to interfere in Benga's family matters any longer, saying, It is not our business, he added the next day. A went back to see Bisa and Oli. When she knew her husband wouldn't be around, she went with fruits and various healing medicines. She advised Pisa to take the boy away from the house and maybe send him to our relatives. Benga will kill me if I try such a thing, Bola fearfully said. 
I, who was listening to the conversation, also agreed with what A.B. had proposed. He begged his mother to let him leave, but she refused. H. looked frustrated. He narrated how his father refused to give him money to start his trade, and now he feels very useless. Hearing this, A. asked him how much he needed for the Anara fabric business and immediately gave him the money with some extra change. He thanked her and A. left. Later that evening, Benga saw Oli as he was talking to a man who sold Anara in the village. He immediately knew that for to be speaking to that man, he already had some money and might be preparing to start a business. So, he rushed to the boy's room and searched everywhere. Five minutes into the search, Binga found some money under Ohm's bed, money that looked enough to start a business. He immediately started a fire in the front yard and started burning the money one after the other. O saw the fire and rushed to the house. He saw his father burning money and ran to check where he kept the money. A gave him, it was nowhere to be found. I am finished, he screamed. He returned to the fireplace and started begging his father to stop burning the money. BGA pushed him away and continued laughing wickedly. He cried his eyes out as he watched his father burn the money helplessly. Bola returned from the market and saw a broken son. She narrated what happened and instantly told his mum he would be running away from home. He had had enough of his father's wickedness. Bola begged him not to leave. She promised to get him another money. Together they went to sleep. Late in the night, Oami packed some of his belongings and left the house. He headed to Anbua's home. In the morning, B went to Waki to cut the growing grasses in the compound, but it was nowhere to be found. He looked everywhere for him to no avail. Avail? Bisa, where is your stupid son? He asked. Bisa, who was busy cooking, was surprised to hear this. Before she could utter a word, he started beating and kicking her, insisting she must know Om's whereabouts. But Bisola was clueless. She kept on crying and telling Benga she had no idea where their son might be. Al, on the other hand, got to A's house safely. He met only A at home. She received him warmly and he narrated everything that happened. A pitied the boy. She immediately suggested he leave the village as soon as possible. Al agreed, and they decided he will go and stay with A's brother in the neighbouring village. You shouldn't travel today, so stay here. Very early tomorrow morning you can leave for my brother's place, she said. She brought him food, and he thanked her. Benga was still looking all over for Ollie when he went to ask his wife where the boy got the money to start a business from. Bola lied at first, saying she gave him the money, but Benga didn't believe her and he started another round of beating on her. She finally confessed that A gave the money, and after this Benga had a clue where the boy might be. He immediately picked a cutlass and started running to his friend's place. As A was eating, B came in and was surprised to see him. They exchanged greetings, and he went into the room to ask his wife, A.B., about what was going on. A.B. narrated everything, and Bio reminded her he had warned her not to interfere in his friend Benga's family affair. A.I. argued that she couldn't just stand by and watch the entire village keep watching the way her friend B. treats his son, and no one has tried to do anything. I am tired of just watching, she added. B was still wrapping his head around the whole issue when they heard a heavy knock on their door. It was Benga. He started screaming, B, bring out that bastard, bring out my son, or else. A stopped eating and ran inside the visitor's room. A B opened the door and Benga came in, looking around for his son. Benga, your son is not here, A said angrily. B came out and Benga immediately started shouting at him to bring out his son, wherever he was hiding him. B, if you don't bring out that boy, I will expose you, Benga threatened. Expose what? A asked, looking confused. B started pleading with Benga, who was smiling wickedly. Bayo tried to go and bring Oami out, but his wife blocked the entrance. I said his son isn't here. Let him do his worst, A B said loudly and clearly. I will expose your secrets if you don't bring that boy. I will tell your wife everything, Benga continued to threaten B. But you begged me to do this as a favor to... You? Bayo replied, almost in tears. At this point, A was totally lost in the conversation. She asked her husband what he meant, 
but he couldn't give her any answer. You mean you only helped the friend by sleeping with his wife? Benga fired back. A.B. looked at Bayo for answers, but he couldn't look at his wife. Let me even say everything. Your husband slept with my wife and even impregnated her, which produced that bastard, that stupid boy, Benga added, almost fainting. Believe me, Benga practically begged me to help him and his wife because they couldn't have any children, Bayo told his wife, while frustrated. So you couldn't refuse, right? I begged you to help me sleep with my wife, my own wife. Can you also accept such? You sound like an idiot in case you don't know, Benga mockingly fired back. With everything that was said, it came out of hiding. So you are my father, yet you watch this monster treat your son like an animal? He asked Bayo in tears. After that day of revelation, Benga started drinking heavily. He became a full-time drunk, and the gist of his inability to impregnate a woman spread across the whole village. Bisa left him, and he was all alone till the end of his life. What do you think later happened? Did A forgive her husband, Bayo, or would you advise her to forgive Bayo? As for the moral lesson of this story, I would like to know what lessons you have learned from this tale. Don't forget to share this video, like, and subscribe. I'll see you at the top.